Well, good morning. Uh, one of my favorite styles of fishing today, dead baiting for pike. Uh, I'm gonna ledger and float fish. I'll take you through the tactics. Hopefully we're gonna get some action. Some of you might recognize this venue. It's predominantly a big carp lake, but we're here for those big old predators. I really hope I can show you one. Uh, lastly, I want to say a massive thank you to all of you that subscribe to the channel and follow us. It means so much. Uh, keep watching during this uh, show. I've got a nice little goodie bag of pike gear, the stuff I use, also a hat. So there's going to be a prize. I'll do a question sometime during the episode. So yeah, I'm going to finish my tea, finish my energy bar, and then I'm going to get these rods out. Well, let's get the first rod out, a simple float fish set up, uh, running unweighted float. Got it set over depth for about a foot or two, a couple of swan shot. If, it, if it, it's a little bit windy, if the wind gets up, I can replace this with a bigger weight, a uh, couple of size six semi barbed. And I've, I threw some dead baits out of the freezer in this bucket. I've got too much choice, to be honest, but probably first choice. Look at that, big fresh Norfolk herring that I actually picked up uh, from Haysboro in Norfolk. I drove up there and bought these uh, a few months ago. Brilliant bait, slimy scales, that's how you want them. I'm going to cut his head off because I just want it to really leak out in that water. So obviously put the barbed hook into the fish. And that's it, you see my hands are so slimy. That's what makes these fresh baits uh, so much better than one you'd buy just like blasted out of the supermarket. Fresh, slimy, bloody, oily, everything you want in a dead bait. So yeah, let's flick it out. Hopefully uh, that's gonna pull one in quickly. Right, first day of the cast, always exciting. Get that fresh herring. I'm just, just gonna flick it over the marginal shelf. I've been pre-baiting this swim, I'm gonna show you what I've been putting in later. But yeah, let's get this one out. There we go. Just let that bait sink. That's on the bottom. Then we'll just cock that float, just tighten down. Hopefully we'll see that float sail away. Right, so I'm gonna get the second rod out. I quite like float fishing on one and ledgering on one. It's uh, sometimes it's hard watching two floats. I like the old uh, the old sleeper stole rod. So yeah, nice trace ledger stem on there. And yeah, let's put a bait on. Let's see in the, the lucky the lucky box. I bought too many options with me, but I think one of my favourite baits, and it's very underrated. Uh, is a trout. So I'm going to put a dead rainbow trout on this one. Always pick the biggest ones. But yeah, trout are really oily, really slimy, and they're a little bit different. Uh, the fish in here aren't pressured. I'm not going to pretend they're, you know, super pressured pike, but I just like a trout bait. Very good bait. Caught some of my best pike on trout hooked up the same and let's flick that out on the old ledger setup. So just before I'm going to put it out I'll, I'll quickly show you nothing clever just a nice ledger stem a uh, little buoyant bit on there which keeps it up off the bottom obviously that's that's free running we don't want any resistance a sort of two to three ounce lead on and then obviously that's clipped onto my trace. Very simple stuff really strong gear uh, 40, 50 pound braid, 50 pound wire. Anyway, let's get this trout out and uh, let's see if it can produce that bite I really want. So the ledger rod going on a simple drop off style indicator. So an open bail arm, just clip that drop off underneath the spool a nice tight line. I've got the rod pointing kind of snooker cue style at the bait, which is important. We don't want any resistance. Uh, lastly, switch the alarm on. And yeah, this is, this is obviously going to drop back if a pike comes towards us. If it picks it up, it'll just fall off and it'll be free running. 
and I'll walk over and uh, hopefully connect with one. So that's the plan. Let's give these a little bit of time to work now, get those oils and juices uh, into the water and hopefully the pike will find them. Well, the drop-off's just gone. Uh, it's been out about 30 minutes. You know, when you start worrying, you're not gonna get a bite. And it has just gone, the old trout. So yeah, let's wind down and hit this. Wind down tight. Whack. Yep, fish on. Keep the pressure on tight. Oh, big old head shakes. Come on. Oh, it's really shaking it, shaking its head. Oh, it's not a big and it got me excited. It's a start though. I can see it on the top. I don't know if you can see that, but there he is. Oh, cool, the old heart's going. Proper adrenaline. It's only a jack, but guys got me proper panicky. Well, it's lightly hooked, so we'll net it. Look at that, very lightly hooked. There we go. Well, we're off the mark. And look at that. If you look here, it wasn't the best bit of netting, but the hooks have come out in the net. We get to use that trout again. Oh, I'm shaking. I don't, every time I get a bite, shaking. Anyway, let's have a look at this one and uh, definitely get the rods back out. Hopefully the start of more to come. Well, here we go, a quick, a quick look. Look at this little thing, it got me so excited, but we're off the mark. We're off the mark with uh, the standard Jack. Let's hope we meet his granny today. But... Beautiful little pike, you can see he's quite a, uh, he's got a little belly on him, so he's been feeding up. But yeah, let's hope we get a bigger one. But it's great uh, to get off the mark, isn't it? You know they're having a feed today. Really good bite, just absolutely flew off. The drop back went, line peeled off. I was shaking as usual. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna slip it back and uh, get that rod back out straight away. Hopefully get another take. Well, I've just, I've just flicked this rod out. I'm trying to tighten up and I think it's gone on the drop. It's windy, but no, that's the way. That's unbelievable. That has literally, that rod has literally just hit the bottom. I felt it down, put it down and something's grabbed it, I'm sure. Very strange. You get them quickly, but that was literally as it hit the bottom. Right, let's check the clutch. All right, wind down. Yep. Oh, this feels better. This feels a lot better. It's hard to tell with this braid, but yeah, this is a better fish. Oh yeah, I can see it. Yeah, it's not doing a lot. Oh yeah, get the net in. Oh, it's lightly hooked, don't come off. Now it's woken up. Oh, it's proper woken up. It didn't know it was hooked. It didn't know it was hooked. Come on. See that trout. In you get, you'll do, you're a nice double. Oh, happy days. Look at me, I'm a mess. On the drop, amazing. The old trout, the heron sat there, my favorite bait. Never, never go about a trout. Whew, excellent, right, let's uh, calm down and have a look at this big girl. Oh, here we go. Ooh, that's a proper one, look at that. The proper heavyweight. Ugh, real fatty. Oh. oh, the hooks are out in the net. It was lightly hooked. I mean, I, I do hit fish early as you should do, but with a small bait as well, you'd expect it to be down a little bit more. Let's have a look at her. Lovely fish, look at that, nice fat. 
thick back, beautiful condition, short snout on her. Absolutely love Pike, who doesn't love that? Heavy as well, I'm not gonna weigh her, but it's heavy, 13, 14, 15 maybe, it's short, but it's, it's a heavy weight. But yeah, not gonna keep them out for long, just admire them. Beautiful fish. This is, this is where all the power, the propulsion comes from. If you look how far set back that dorsal is and the anal fin and a big tail, and that's what moves them so quickly off so they can ambush their prey. Absolute fantastic species. Right, let's get her back quickly. This nice big double, she's had a, she's had a good uh, couple of minutes in the net now and I can see she's nice and strong. So yeah, time for the best bit, watching her swim away. All that water's freezing, come here. Come on, girl. She couldn't resist that trout. Just lower that net. There we go. Back you go. Awesome stuff. Still time for another one, but really happy with that fish. So to thank you all for watching, I've got a little prize. It's uh, some of the tackle that I'm using in this feature, some uh, weights, floats, traces, also an all-round angler beanie hat. To stand a chance of winning, please subscribe to the channel and in the comments below, if you can put the bait that I caught the first two pike on, please. Good luck. Well, the best thing, the best thing about this venue is you get lunch uh, delivered in my favorite lunchbox. What have we got? What have we got, Kate? Oh, frazzles, Kit Kat, app, apple for health. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a nice little feast there, Lloydie. Thank you very much. What's your lunchbox, Rich? Uh, my favorite, that's my lucky lunchbox, unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just uh, heard a bit of commotion to the bay to my left. Uh, look down there and there was bait fish uh, scattering out, so I'm sure it's a pike. So I've wound in the ledger rod, I've just slipped on a little joey mackerel, and I'm going to walk down there and see if I can get a bonus pike. Well, we're down in the bay, and I don't know if you can see, but look how calm it is in here. It's really rough and windy, and in here it's calm, so you're definitely going to have bait fish in here. And this is where we saw the commotion. So I've just got the simple little float rig, a couple of swan shot, just going to plop this out. I might twitch it a little bit back after a few minutes. There we go. Just let that little mackerel flutter down. I love it, sort of almost stalking for pike. I absolutely love it. I, I do get bored of sitting in a swim and it, it doesn't really matter how well that swim's fishing. I love to have a little wander and stay mobile. It'd be a real bonus if we can get one here. There you go. Do you see that? You see that big swell down there? Right, let's get that float in there. That was definitely a pike. Come on. Well, we were going to move out of this bay and then, uh, yeah, we've seen one strike again and I get a bit frustrated that I've not hooked it. So I've just popped over to the bucket and got a smell. I'm going to sort of head hook it like that. So it kind of, I'm going to let it sink to the bottom and then kind of wobble, sink and draw, just letting it flutter up and down a few cars. See if we can get this bite. That pike's definitely teasing me. Well, I'm not sure, but I think as I move that, I swear something's just hit it, but yeah, I think that is a bite. Look at that sliding across the top. Let's see if you're on. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, fish on. Well, I think we can, uh, I think we can chin this one out. There we go. There we go. Little Jack, but he was teasing me and uh, just changing to that smell second cast with a smell 
and we got him. So yeah, I can uh, I can sleep well tonight now. He was playing on my mind while I couldn't catch him. Look at that. Little uh, little beauty. Let's just slip him back and uh, we'll move up to uh, our main swim. Pretty little thing. Probably only a couple of years old. I'll see you in uh, probably 10 years, hopefully, when you're a 20 pounder. Well, I'm sure one of the reasons we've had a couple of quick bites is because I've been pre-baiting this swim. So any leftover bait or even some fresh bait, I've been chopping up the last two weeks and putting in with my scoop. Nice chops, fresh herring, mackerel, anything you've got, chop it up. Uh, quite big chunks so I can ping them out with a scoop. Uh, Pre-baiting for pike is a massive edge. I know you can't do it everywhere, but if you can do it, it's well worth doing it. You can have these fish queuing up when you get to the bank. But it's not as simple as just chucking some old fish anywhere and hoping the pike turn up. You've still got to locate them. So when I'm on like big lakes, rivers, obviously I'm looking for features and I'm looking for any clues that will tell me where the pike are. Uh, one of the old favourites is watching some grebes dive. Uh, you're looking for bait fish. Where there's bait fish, there will be predators. Uh, on this lake, for example, you've got carp anglers here in the winter and uh, quite a few of them have told me in the last month they've seen pike down this end of the lake and they've seen bait fish jumping out. So that's a great clue. So speak to anglers. Uh, pike anglers probably won't tell you where they are. So speak to match anglers and carp anglers. Uh, but when it comes to features, I like the reed beds. I like deep marginal shelves and I like deep water. I want something that's probably going to hold bait fish and predators together. And then you can start roving that swim. Start short. You can fish medium. I, I don't tend to fish too long for pike unless I really think they're out in the open water. But that's a good little uh, edge when it comes to locating them. Well, we're away again. It's the trout. I don't know what it is about trout, but that's probably been out five minutes. We're just going to do a little bit to camera and yeah, it's going. See that braid just going out my hand. Always check the clutch then wind down tight and give it a proper good strike like so second time always kited right round there don't go round there what are you doing round there oh in the reeds come out there it is i've got her away from the reeds Back we go. Feels like another good one. Oh yeah, that's a good fish. Right. Look at her fighting, Lloyd, look at that. She's proper angry. Oh yeah, that's another good fish. Come on, straight in the net. Oh, you see the little trout. In you go. Whew. Wow. Oh, that is a good fish. That's a proper thick set fish. They're so short and thick. Oh, another good double. Happy days. Whoa, look at this. Look at that big girl. Look how fat that pike is. Whoa, that is incredibly deep. Let me just... She's lightly hooked, but uh, I've got a flying treble to be careful of. A little bit of a nightmare there. We had a flying treble in the net. Uh, so what I did is I had to cut that, quickly get the hook out. And what I wanted to do was give, give her a rest again, make sure she's nice and, uh, nice and strong. Let's put her on the scales quickly. Show you the scales, it's a big fish. What we got? Oh, 20 pounder by the looks of it. Just over 20. 20, 20 pound an ounce is, I'll take that. That's what we came for. I'll quickly show you. That's what's left of the, left of that trout. Right, let's have a quick look. She's lovely and strong now. Just spin around. Oh, I'm a little bit better holding them this way 
But yeah, always rest them. Take your time with these big girls. Oh, they're so delicate. Look how, so it's a short fish, but it, you can put a saddle across her and she is fat, fat and lively and very, oh, look at that. Oh, oh God, struggling. There we go, come on, Rich. There we go, look at her. What a beast. What an absolute beast, such a chunky pike. Probably down to my pre-baiting, to be fair. <laughs> She's been eating that, look at her. A magnificent fish. <sighs> at the other side, look at that beautiful spotted pike. <sighs> <sighs> Lovely fish. Right, <sighs> check her over. <sighs> Let's get her back, wow. Magic so made up. Right, she's had a lovely rest again. And obviously, it don't keep these fish out for very long. I'm hoping she swims off. Look at her. Go on, big girl, back you go. Back you, good girl. There she goes. Awesome. <sighs> yes. <laughs> well, we're coming to the end of the day now and uh, what a great session. I'm really happy, as you can see, big smiler, you know, a jack pike, a, a nice mid double, a bit of fun in the bay. And then, you know, to obviously finish with a 20 pounder, a great day for any predator angler. I hope you've really enjoyed it. Please remember to enter and have a bit of fun in the comments below with our competition and anything else you'd like to comment about, like to see us do, also put that in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again next time.